Terminal 2 of San Francisco International Airport is bustling with activity as passengers navigate their way through the sleek and modern facility. The terminal's architecture is characterized by high ceilings and expansive windows, allowing for an abundance of natural light to flood the space. Among the crowd, a man in sunglasses stands out, exuding an air of confidence and sophistication. Rei Nakamura, dressed in a sharp suit tailored to perfection, scans the bustling terminal, his eyes hidden behind designer sunglasses. The luxury luggage by his side is a testament to his wealth and status. As he wheels the luggage effortlessly through the terminal, it is clear that he is accustomed to navigating the world of high society and global travel. Ray's presence turns heads as he passes by, his immaculate appearance commanding attention from the other travelers. His posture and stride exude an aura of power and success, drawing the gaze of onlookers who can't help but wonder who this man is. As Ray makes his way towards the arrivals area, he checks his luxury wristwatch, ensuring that he is on schedule. The gleaming timepiece is yet another testament to his wealth, serving as a subtle reminder that this is a man who is no stranger to the finer things in life. As he approaches the arrivals gate, he scans the crowd, searching for the person assigned to pick him up. He remains unruffled by the chaos surrounding him, appearing to be entirely at ease in this bustling environment. With a slight nod and a brief, acknowledging smile, he signals to me, the person who's here to pick him up. Ray smiles as I approach him. Are you Jess Lloyd? Do we know each other? <laughs> Only in my wildest dreams. I glare at him. <laughs> well, I hope you're a heavy sleeper then. I'm Ray Nakamura. He offers a hand for me to shake. I reject the offer. Cold shoulder, huh? Sorry, I have a strict no handshakes with Dodgers policy. <laughs> I see. And here I thought I had a chance to win you over with my charm. You know what they say, you can't spell charm without harm. You're quite endearing. It shows you a raise right. <laughs> oh, please. Save your bullshit for someone who cares. <laughs> it's always nice to meet a fan. <laughs> oh, don't flatter yourself. I'm just here to make sure you don't cause any earthquakes with your ego. Ray smiles. So, do you know who I am? Yep. I know who you are. This whole city does. We hate you, by the way. And here I thought I was the most loved citizen. What a twisted reality I live in. You're in San Francisco, and you're a future LA Dodgers Hall of Famer. That's why we hate you. Hall of Famer? Would you say I'm that? Let me check. I pretend to type on my phone. Nope. It says here you're just a Dodgers player with a big ego. <laughs> Touche, Jess. You're quick on your feet. <laughs> yeah, well, I had to be to keep up with all the home runs you've given up to the Giants. Ray shakes his head as I laugh. <laughs> wow, you're fun. We're gonna get on. So, the last time we spoke, you wanted my help with a project? What's the project? Uh, that's right, uh, but it's a little delicate. Dude, I am not sleeping with you. <laughs> what? Who said I wanted you to sleep with me? I'm here for something entirely different, not involving sex with you. Oh, then I'm glad that's been resolved. You're a weird lady. Yeah, weird like the guy who brings his own kale smoothie to a burger joint. I've never done that. Oh, well, then I guess I've never read an article from Vogue when you've said you've done that. Hmm. A weird lady with a beautiful smile. You wouldn't tell me what you wanted over the phone. What is it? Would you mind telling me before we get into the car? I don't want things to be awkward in the car when I reject you. You're funny, and women don't reject me. <laughs> yeah, they just throw tomatoes at you during the games. <laughs> hey... I take that as a sign of affection. Yeah. Well, maybe they just want to make sure you get your daily dose of vitamin C. <laughs> you know what they say. If you can't beat them, make salad dressing out of them. <laughs> and that's why you're the baseball player and not the comedian. Ray and I start walking away. So, you're an expert, right? You could say that. 
But what field are we talking about specifically? Love, romance, dating? That's why you're in enemy territory. You want me to set you up on a date? That's right. I want to find the woman of my dreams. People say you're the expert. Wait, are you saying people actually listen to me? (laughs) Well, that's a first. Ray shakes his head as we walk off. He follows me with his luggage in tow. Ray is behind me. He's struggling to keep up with me. Hey, wait up, Lightning McQueen! (laughs) Uh... I'm pretty sure that's not how you say lightning. I stop walking and stare at Ray. You want to be set up by me. Why do you look so horrified by that thought? You have a great track record. What track record? Jess, you're a great matchmaker. (laughs) Oh, sure. And I'm also a unicorn who speaks six languages and can play the guitar with my feet. (laughs) That would explain the glitter in your hair. Ugh, I roll my eyes. You're impossible. Ray smiles. And yet, you can't resist my charm. How do you even know I have a good track record? I went to college with your brother, Andrew. We're best friends, and he told me a few months ago he came to you with an issue. He was about to get divorced. Yeah? Oh? So, you found him a woman within three weeks of his divorce being final. You stare at Ray to see if he's gone crazy. Yeah, because I knew there were plenty of my friends who liked him. I'm not sure you're very likable in this town. Why not? Why aren't I likable? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because you crushed the hopes and dreams of an entire city in one home run? (sighs) Oh, come on. That's stupid. I'm sorry, Ray. But you're a lost cause. Hmm. How much will it cost to get you to help me? Name your price. I smile. (laughs) Sorry, Ray. My integrity is not for sale. But I hear there's a discount bin at the local strip club. Come on. This isn't about the money. I can't help you. I think you need to get back on a plane back to L.A. No one wants you here. I'll give you 250 grand for six weeks of work. I'm stunned. I'm stunned into silence. What did you say? You heard me. I'll pay you that much under the strict condition that I meet the woman of my dreams by that time. I can't believe what I'm hearing. It's more than you'll earn in eight years. So what do you say? You can't tell me you're bold enough to turn that large sum of money away. No one is that brave. Hmm. I need to think about it. Your dad doesn't have health insurance. His medical bills are piling up. (sighs) I'm furious. I am utterly furious with Ray. How the hell do you know that? I did my research on you. Oh, great. I hope you didn't come across my FBI file or the secret stash of chocolate. I did. Uh, Thanks for reminding me. So you're using this information you gained to manipulate the situation? You could say that. What do you say? (sighs) I shake my head. We walk up to my car. I say you're like a dog who won't stop begging for scraps at the dinner table. It's sad and pathetic. Is that a yes or no to our deal? It's a fuck off. You need to get out of my city before I kill you. (laughs) Jess, take this as a compliment, but you know how to make a guy feel welcome. It's like the red wedding all over again. I open my car door. I enter and drive away speeding. Ray sits with his luggage next to him. He's waiting to get on a flight back to Santa Monica. I plop down beside him. He takes off his shades. Baseball fan boos at him. We hate you, Ray. Burn it now! Sorry, but I don't plan on vacationing there anytime soon. I told you people here hated you. What are you doing here? You know why. I've thought long and hard about your proposal, and I've decided we could use your money. 
We really need it. Is that so? Yes, it is. And I'm willing to put aside our differences for the sake of my family. Hmm. Well, Jess, that's quite the sales pitch. But I think I'll stick to investing in people that don't hate me. I take a seat beside Ray. Look, Ray. <laughs> my family needs that money. Yeah, well, the offer has been rescinded. Come on, Ray. You said it yourself. My dad's medical bills are piling. Plus, my brother lost his chef job. We need help. Hey, you said that no woman in this town would find me attractive. So what would be the point of me sticking around here? There are a few women who like you. Huh, yeah? Why am I not convinced of that? Well, there is. At least, I hope so. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not putting my offer back on the table. I'm sorry. I'm out of here. Please. I smile. <laughs> you have a great smile, but it's still a no to your offer. Sorry. Ugh. Fine. You've left me with no other choice but to do this. What will you do? You have no cards to play. Just give up. I'll sell my story to the LA Times. Oh no, the end of the world is near. Jess Lord is going to expose me for the fraud I am. Oh god, I feel like crying. Ugh. I'm serious. I'll do it. What made up story is that? The story of how you offered to pay for my dad's medical bills in exchange for me sleeping with you. Wow, that's a great story. You should win a Pulitzer for it. I'll still say it. We both know that's made up. Yeah, but I'm sure your fans would love to read that story. And who knows, it might just upset a few of your fans to the point of them setting up a GoFundMe campaign to help my family. You witch. Oh no, you're mistaken. I'm a bitch. <laughs> I thought you were Jess Lloyd. When did you change your name to bitch? I smile as Ray glares at me. I'm not giving you a cent. Don't make me fight dirty, Ray. I'm not giving you a cent. I'll tell my brother you slept with me and didn't call me back. I know how tight you are. Would you be willing to lose a long-lasting friendship like that over something so stupid and made up? Mm. You really know how to twist a person's balls, don't you? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was dealing with a eunuch. Funny. Is that a deal? Will you let me find you the woman of your dreams? Only if you can find a woman who dreams of dating an overpaid, overrated baseball player. I smile at Ray. I'll think about it. Well, if you're going to think about it, I'm going to need you to stand up and follow me to my car. I said I'd think about it from home. I'm not dumb, Ray. You'll get a jump start on my story, which your PR team will spin. Come on, I'm not stupid. <laughs> You're not? Wow, that's news to me. Is that a deal on the horizon I see? I really hate you. Mm, most people do. Come on, get. You can stay in my apartment until I've found you the woman of your dreams. I'd rather stay in a hotel. Suit yourself. Maybe you can stay at the Bates Motel. I hear the vacancy rate is pretty high. Well, I'd rather stay there than be anywhere near you. I hate you. <laughs> oh, sure you do. Come on, buddy. Ray stands up, he picks up his luggage, and follows me. I open the front door. Ray and I step into my apartment. Despite its small size, Ray's large build almost engulfs the space we're in. He takes a moment to look around and take in the surroundings of the apartment. So, welcome to my humble abode. Humble? It's like a cozy little boat cabin. I like it. Boat cabin? <laughs> You're too kind. And is that a glint of sarcasm I detect? Who, me? Never. There's a poster of Tiger Woods winning his first Open Championship in the UK. He's hugging his dad. Ah, Tiger Woods? The golfer, right? Yep. 
He's a legend. He's won more championships than you have brain cells. Got a problem with him? Problem? Me? No, not at all. It's just a bit surprising considering you have a living baseball legend right here in front of you and you rather admire him. <laughs> you? A legend? You have got to be joking. Ouch. That's cold, Jess. Well, you can't expect me to inflate your ego while you're crashing at my place. Fair enough. So, where will I be resting my legendary head? My first thought was the spare room, but it's more of a glorified closet. So you'll be in the master bedroom. And where will you sleep? The box room, of course. Just think of it as my way of keeping you in check. <laughs> ah, the famous Jess hospitality. How could I ever forget it? Don't get too comfortable, Ray. You'll be paying my rent for the next few weeks. Oh, really? And why is that? Well, I lost my job last week, and since you're a mega-rich sports star, I figured you wouldn't mind helping out a friend. You drive a hard bargain, Jess, but I guess I owe you one. <gasps> That's the spirit! <laughs> now, make yourself at home while I use the restroom. We'll talk more about your dating prospects later. <sighs> Can't wait. Hey, so my brother wants to hang out tomorrow. We'll head over to his house at noon for lunch. Don't tell him I said this, but plans to propose tomorrow. Cool. <laughs> Michelle is great for him. Ugh, I agree. She's amazing. So uh, what kind of girls are you looking to set me up with? We'll get into that. But first, I need the restroom. Hang tight. I'll be back. I walk off. Make yourself at home. I plan to, but thanks. <laughs> I take a seat on the couch. Ray stands, glaring at the Tiger Woods portrait. You know, glaring at Tiger Woods won't make you a better athlete, Ray. Who says I'm glaring? I'm just trying to absorb some of his winning energy. <laughs> well, good luck with that. Now, sit down and let's talk about your dating preferences. I need to do my research. Ray takes a seat on the couch. I pick up a pen and a notepad. All right, let's start with the eyes. Blue, brown, green. What's your preference? I've always been drawn to guy blue or ocean eyes. Would brown eyes be a deal breaker? No, not at all. What about hair? Blondes, brunettes, or redheads? Brunettes, definitely. And are you into petite women or do you prefer curves? Curves. There's something comforting about them. Huh. You do realize you just described me, right? What? Uh, uh, no, I didn't. Ocean eyes, brunette, curvy. Sounds a lot like me, Ray. Uh, that's just a coincidence, I swear. Sure it is. <laughs> anyway... Uh, what kind of hobbies and interests do you want your girl to have? Similar interests or something completely different? Oh, um, I don't know. I guess I just want someone who can hold a conversation about sports. <laughs> uh, seriously? You're describing me again. Um, it's... Oh, yeah, okay, look, it's not intentional, I promise. Let's just move on. All right. Can you cook, or do you expect your future partner to handle all the culinary duties? I can cook, so I don't mind doing it. She'll have you wrapped around her finger. I know I would. <laughs> I'm sure you would, but I enjoy cooking. It reminds me of my grandma. We used to cook together when I was a kid. Aw, that's sweet. What was her name? I don't talk about her with strangers. Uh, ouch! Way to ruin the moment, jerk. <laughs> You're welcome. So, where would you take a date for your first outing together? Either Paris or Rome. Go big or go home, right? 
Try again, Romeo. Uh, fine. A cozy locally owned restaurant where I can hopefully go unnoticed. Good call. But you might want to consider wearing glasses on your date. The minute they recognize you, they'll either be gold diggers or want to introduce you to their overprotective dads. Well, that's reassuring. Thanks. So, glasses it is? Sure, why not? I'm writing on the notepad. Ray stares at me. It's weird. If I didn't know better, I'd say he was checking me out. Hmm. It still sounds like you're describing me. Are you sure you're not? I'm not. Would you lay off me? <laughs> okay, I'm just checking. But I don't believe you. Ray hmm. smiles. Do you think you can set me up or not? Hmm. I know a few of my friends who are single at the moment. I could set you up on a date tomorrow night if you'd like. I appreciate the offer, but I'm not sure I'm ready to be a crash test dummy for your dating experience right now. Oh, come on, Ray. What's the worst that could happen? You might actually find someone who can tolerate you. No, I'm a disaster movie when it comes to dating. I need to work on myself first. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I'm a disaster when it comes to cooking. We all have our weaknesses, Ray. <laughs> Hang on. You have dated before, right? Oh, tell me a mega rich sports star goes out on dates or I might just have to laugh at you. I've been on like 20 dates in my life and they've all been spaced out. Wow, 20 whole dates? <laughs> well, look at you, Mr. Casanova. Ray shakes his head. Can I have your permission to laugh? You laugh and I fly back to Santa Monica. Ugh, fine. Spoil my fun. I'm a little raw when it comes to dating. Yeah, I get a sense of that. What do you suggest for me to overcome that fear? You're the expert. Have at it. Hmm, I don't know. But I do know that we need to hold out on sending you out on real dates until at least your third week here. I guess that gives me more time to perfect my dating game. <laughs> Maybe I'll start with a marathon of romantic comedies and work my way up from there. Oh, not enough movies in the world, Ray. Will that give us enough time to go out on practice dates to know each other? Yeah, sure. I would like to know what your dating technique looks like before I send you out on a date with my friends. From my experience, it's a disaster. Think Titanic, but ten times worse. <laughs> I'm sure it isn't that bad. Oh, ignorance. <laughs> what do you fancy for dinner? We've got a few restaurants around here. I could go pick us up some food. You're not a vegan. No, I was in the Bahamas last week. I had some delicious jerk chicken. Uh, do you know if you have a Caribbean restaurant here? Yeah, we do. There's one around the corner. In fact, I have a menu. I pick up a menu from the coffee table and hand it to Ray. I'm going to head off to the restaurant. Text me what you'd like from the menu. Sure. I get up. I pick up my car keys and walk to the door. Open it and exit. Ray's phone rings. He picks it up. What's up, Andrew? Yeah, I'm with your sister. What can I say? She begged me to stay with her. No, no. I'm not planning on sleeping with her on my first night here. Ray shakes his head. Original. Nice. I mean... I'm not saying it's not tempting, but I'm trying to keep it professional here. Plus, I don't want to ruin my chances of getting a good Yelp review from her. <laughs> yeah, she's perfect. Thanks for suggesting her to me. She's beautiful. Yeah, I can see her as my girlfriend, but I don't think she's interested in me just yet. I'm going to have to do more work than expected to get her to like me. <laughs> yeah, you know my history. When have these things ever been easy for me? Look, I have six weeks with her. 
We'll see if, within that timetable, I can make some miracles happen. I doubt it, but it's worth trying. At the very least. <laughs> You're laughing, but I'm right. Anyway, I'll update you tomorrow at lunch. See you then. Bye. Well, this is going to be one hell of a roller coaster ride. <sighs> Good luck, Ray. You'll freaking need it. At this awkward moment, we sound out. Justine Leah Hintz and Alex Bowie lent their voices to create the charm of Field of Dreams. The creative force behind the writing, production and direction of the show is Joao and Sita. If this series captivated you, don't hesitate to subscribe and favor us with a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. For further interactions, join us on Facebook under That Love Podcast and on Instagram and Twitter at At That Love Pod. We're grateful for your support. Enjoy the rest of your day.